Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I hope we will have excited webinar today because our goal will be showing uh, exciting technologies and, uh, of course, more exciting will be to see that we can easily show 10 times better performance uh, with uh, cash than without cash, against um, uh, no cash at all. Uh, this will be very easy because we will be able to switch on and switch off the read cache during the benchmark. So today uh, we have invited um, uh, so PMC Sierra, so uh, well-known name Adaptec, uh, uh, to uh, show the technology, the cache technology. Also we have invited Aztec, uh, the famous uh, uh, media, enterprise media manufacturer, so uh, we will have the two uh, presentations first to introduce the technologies and later on we will show uh, the setup with um, DSS. This will be very easy, so uh, this will be extremely easy. We, we will just make, a, uh, you know, the storage server which will be powered by Adaptec ASR 6805Q, a new RAID controller, and um, as made by uh, Aztec, uh, the drive uh, name is Mach 16. So this is a still inexpensive drive, by, but already enterprise-grade drive, so um, ready for the heavy-duty uh, applications. And we will use just a Windows 2008 client because we can write, we can use IOMETA to benchmark um, and this is very easy under Windows. This is why we decided to use Windows, but of course uh, as a client it can be anything like uh, VMware ASX, it can be Xen server or any other workstation, right? Because we will just use iSCSI here. Okay, so uh, coming back. Uh, to, in, uh, to, the, to our presentation. First, we will introduce um, the Adaptec technology, so by PMC Sierra, and we will ask uh, Paul to, to guide the presentation right now. So I will just make it uh, bigger. Okay. And, okay, sorry for this switching. I was switching already to end the screen. And then let us ask Paul uh, to start the uh, presentation. Paul, are you ready? I am, yes. Thank you, Janusz. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, my name is Paul Gagnon. I'm a field applications engineer based in Germany, and I'm responsible for EMEA as a territory. And today, uh, yeah, I would like to thank OpenE very much for inviting us to talk about our Series 6 controllers with uh, MaxCache 2.0 technology. So, Paul, uh, your, uh, you have control over the presentation. If you have some problems, oh. just tell me next slide. Okay, I didn't know that I could uh, go to the next slide. Yeah, next slide, please, Janos. Uh -huh. Okay. So I just pressed down there. Okay, fine. So every, I think everybody knows Adaptec, who has been in this industry for a while. Um, we're over 25 years in the storage business, mainly with SCSI and now with serial SCSI, SATA, etc. And uh, the company Adaptec was purchased by PMC Sierra in June of 2010, and PMC Sierra is probably less known to most people, but PMC um, in the storage arena, what's of interest is that we make uh, the SAS expanders for NetApp, for EMC, for HP. We make the RAID controllers for, PM, for um, HP's PCI Express-based controllers. And this has been very interesting for Adaptec now as a division of PMC because in the past we were using Intel IOPs for our 3 gig SAS products and now we have our own 6 gig 
SAS rocks as a weighed on chip in house from PMC. That's what our Series 6 controllers are based on, and all controllers going forward obviously will be based on PMC Sierra silicon as well. So you can see the revenue breakdown of PMC Sierra. We're about a $600 million company per year, and more than half of that is storage, and probably about half of that or a little bit, bit less is, is Adaptech. Okay, so that's where we stand with 14,000 employees, world, 1,400 employees worldwide, sorry, and with also diversification in these other areas of optical and mobile. Just a, a few words to PMC Sierra. So our Series 6 product, which has been out for several months now, um, it, this is the first product that we introduced here, Series 6, which was with no Q functionality. But anyway, just as a quick overview of the Series Series 6 product line shows our Series 6 product uh, with eight ports internally. We also have this product with four ports internal and with four internal, four external. These are six gig grade controllers for PCI Express 2.0. You also can see here uh, a flash module which we have installed. We call this AFM, Adaptech Flash Module 600. And this flash module is a replacement for the technology of uh, batteries, which we've been using for several years. But now with this new technology, we call it zero maintenance because there's no more need to go in and change the batteries. This is a super capacitor which holds the charge if the, if the, um, if the uh, voltage, if the current or if the system goes down with no power. This, this is holding the charge for one minute, and in that time, we take all of the data out of the DRAM and put it into a NAND flash with a memory controller. And so it's an exciting technology, keeping people from having all these uh, problems with maintenance of batteries. So next foil. I can't see this, Janusz. Could you go to the next foil, please? Mm -hmm. So that's zero maintenance cache. This is a very busy slide. Just really quickly, I just wanted to emphasize that we, we no longer need batteries. Batteries, we have problems with a battery is maybe after a year not as good as it was before. Maybe after two years you need to replace it. Then you have the problems with recycling of batteries. And now with the SuperCap technology and with the NAND flash, you copy that over. We copy that over before the power goes down and that data stays in the cache for up to 10 years. Uh, so it's much more stable technology and much more reliable technology. Okay, the next slide, please. So Series 6E, this is the little brother of the Series 6. So it's the low cost model. If people know our Series 2 controllers, these are basically the follow on products from the 3 gig Series 2. Now these are six gig controllers, low end, low cost, four port, eight port, no RAID 5, RAID 6, or anything like that, just RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 10, and the RAID 1E. RAID 1E is basically a mirroring across three drives where you copy the data to A and B, and then to copy the next stripe to B and C, and the next stripe to C and A. So it's just a rotating mirror, if you will. These are the low cost versions which are driver compatible with the other six, six uh, Series 6 products. Next slide, please. The 6T is the same technology, but just a different form factor. So you can see the connectors coming out of the top here. So these are basically made for high density servers. It's shown with the high bracket, but basically most people would buy this to use with the low profile in a 2U server. So it's just, so if you don't have the room out of the back of the controller for the connectors, this uh, allows you to save space and, and connect the controllers in that fashion. Okay, next one, please. So now to talk about the Series 6 with Max, Max, uh, Max Cache 2.0. These products mostly came about because of work we're doing with data centers. Um, so this is our second generation SSD caching. The first generation was SSD read caching only. The second generation now is improved, optimized SSD read caching, and also our first generation of SSD write caching. So the whole concept here is to 
improve mostly improve transactions as you say do more with less less hardware more the same performance say using less hardware than you would need in the past and reducing latency which is very important to a lot of these customers next fall next slide please so these are our six Q controllers, and this can be a little confusing to people because sometimes they want to buy a Series 6 card or they have a Series 6 card and want to use SSD caching, but we enable the SSD caching only on the controllers that have a Q in the name. So you need to buy the 6Q, the Q card, and then you can use any SSD on the market, but what we really recommend is to use them from our compatibility list, which is available on the website. And um, we've got had very good experience with STEC. We have to say that. And uh, so the Q card, it's that's basically the Q is just a, a, a programming at our factory to enable the Q technology. So you can use an SSD as a cache. On all controllers, you can use SSDs in arrays. But if you want to use the SSD caching feature, it needs to be the Q controller. Okay, and the Q controller is also always shipped with the AFM 600, so you always have that DRAM cache backup in case of um, power loss. Next one, please. And so what is this Max Cache 2.0? What are we really doing here? So the idea is we know that SSDs are very fast with random access. They're fast with sequential access too, but the real advantage of the SSD compared to the HDD is the random access because there's no mechanical seeking going on. Um, so what we are, are doing with our algorithm on the read side, for example, is the first at first the information gets written to the array. On a per array basis, you can enable read caching, SSD read caching, SSD write caching, or both. So on a given array, let's say you have SSD read caching enabled. At first, the application will write to the array, and as we notice, where where ob obviously the RAID controller sees all the I/O, so it knows which data blocks are being read, and it also knows which data blocks are only being read and are not being overwritten. So we are keeping track of this information and making lists about what are the best candidates to put into the SSD. And when we see that certain data blocks are being read very often and not being changed very often, then we mark them as candidates for the SSD. And when they reach a certain threshold of the criteria, we copy that into the SSD. And after that, we're only reading out of the SSD. So for example, the daily news on the internet would be in the SSD because people are accessing it very often. Or if you have a database uh, with certain per, uh, certain uh, blocks that get accessed very regularly, they will quickly find their way into the SSD. And once it's in the SSD, then we're reading only out of the SSD, so we're avoiding all of the random, all of the seek time that uh, that a HDD needs. Okay. Paul, then we yes. Yeah. Wait. We had a question. Maybe we can answer at once. Uh, sure. The question is. Is it tested on single expander chassis from Supermicro? Yes, this works fine in 3 gig and 6 gig expander chassis from Supermicro, sure. Whether you're talking about you know, 2U products, uh, 826 or whatever, or the 846 or the, you know, all of them, yes. You can use, okay, you can put the, Sure. So that it's that's also brings up a good point because if you're connecting the, these directly to the to an eight port card, you can only connect eight devices. But if you use expander technology, you can connect as many as you want, and you can put the SSD in an expander backplane just like you can put in you know just like you do with the with the hard drives. Okay, so and then if what what we if we see that okay that was today's news, but now in three days nobody's reading the old news, for example, then we recognize in the algorithm okay that data is no longer interesting, and we're checking for other candidates to overwrite the old data. So if data becomes stale, 
then it's going to be overwritten if the cache, if the SSD cache uh, is getting small for the amount of hot data that we see. Okay, so that's how the, that's how the um, read side works. And on the write side, the write caching is, is a little different because on write, on read, we're looking at the, we want the information that's not changing very much. On write, we want the information that is changing very much because if we know certain blocks are being changed very often, then let's just put it in the SSD and forget about the HDD. But with the, with the write technology, uh, what I need to mention is right now, it's not redundant at the SSD. So you, if the SSD fails, you can have a big problem with a large array that's behind the SSD. Only in the right case. Read is no problem. If the read SSD fails, no problem. You have all your data on the, on the, on the array. But with write, it's an integral part of the array. So where this technology is being used today, the write technology, is mostly in data centers where the redundancy is in a grid sort of thing or at the server level at any rate. Or say with OpenE, if you have you know, mirrored um, iSCSI targets. So that would be the kind of application that where you could use this write technology today. In the near future, we'll have a RAID 1 SSD caching available so that the write technology will be, SS, will be redundant at the SSD caching level. Okay, um, next slide, please. So just very quickly, this is just showing how much the IOPs can increase. You will see this in the read, in the demo that Janusz is going to do. Also, latency is very, very important in a lot of applications in internet, for example, that people, if you're waiting more than four seconds, for example, there's statistics that show that people will just go away from that website. So it's very important to keep down that latency and to increase IOPs. Next, please. Write cache. The write caching we're seeing also very good increase in performance, but it's more like half as good as the read cache in the most optimal case. And that's because of SSDs writing slow, more slowly than, than read. At least that's what we've seen in our labs. So these numbers are best case. We also see customers are only seeing maybe factor two increase, but they're also very, very happy with that. Okay, but these are like maximum numbers that you're seeing here. Next slide, please. And just as a last slide, this is just kind of a, a economic uh, situation here where you can say you can reduce the number of servers if you're looking at it only from a performance standpoint and you're using the SSDs, you can get the same performance with much fewer servers by adding SSDs and using the max, max cache technology. Uh, and that's kind of like the message that we wanted to bring across there. That's my last slide. So that was it for me, Janos. Okay. Paul, thank you very much. And now we will switch to uh, Gatano. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Gesano Pastore. I'm the regional sales manager for STC, responsible for Central Europe uh, and uh, yeah, Benelux and uh, Russia and Turkey. Um, so we will talk today a bit uh, about uh, STC. Just very quickly, I will give you some information about uh, my company, and then we go uh, in more details about uh, our technology. So, very okay. quickly. Um, Getano, sorry for this. I was starting from the uh, okay. last slide. Okay, so now everybody can see that um, Getano name, okay, and what he is responsible yeah. for. Okay, so now let us uh, <coughs> switch to the next slide. Yeah. Okay, so uh, STC basically, uh, for the one who don't know, uh, our company, we are based in the uh, US, we are a US company, around 1,000 employees, 200 engineers, started making SSD since 1994. We work mostly in enterprise uh, market, uh, but we have also, let's say, a leadership position in uh, defense and government, let's say. 
Há aqui diferenças do. Let's say. Against the other, this is the vendors, is that we develop our own control. So you, you see that today in the market there are something like 160 SST vendors. Uh, on this uh, big number, there is only a few of them that develop uh, the technology. Um, we have a very wide uh, portfolio of, of IPs uh, in terms of, uh, let's say, SSD technologies. Uh, we offer a wide uh, portfolio of SSD with different interface from the SAS, uh, SATA, fiber channel, uh, and uh, okay, similar. Okay, next slide, please. So just to give you an idea, we uh, we are the SSD enterprise uh, uh, company, so we work. Uh, uh, with all the bigger OEMs in the uh, enterprise storage arena. We started basically in 2005 with the first enterprise SSD and now, let's say since last year, we are starting to bring in our products also in channel. So, and, uh, and thanks also to partners like OpenE and Adaptech, uh, um, yeah, we are able now to offer this solution which is enterprise level also to the channel customers. Okay, next slide, please. So this is a bit uh, a snapshot about our product portfolio. We start from uh, RAM-based uh, SSD 3.5-inch low latency, uh, PCI Express uh, uh, solid-state uh, accelerator. Zusiops um, is a let's say high-end uh, SAS uh, SSD. Um, available also in fiber channel. Uh, then we have Max 16, which is let's say the product which uh, um, we are showing in the demo. And then we have also some kind of embedded SSD for the military and the aerospace. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, this was a bit, let's say, the overview about STCS company. I would like today to give you some information about uh, uh, technology. So how do we build uh, the SSD and what there is basically behind uh, an SSD for enterprise application. Uh, just keep in mind that an SSD is based uh, on, uh, you can identify two, two blocks, two big blocks. One is the controller which is, let's say, talking with the host side, but also which is managing the, the portion of the, the SSD which is storing information, which is the flash media. Flash media today is, uh, let's say, basically NAND technology, uh, flash, NAND, NAND flash technology, and uh, the two most uh, used technology and uh, the technology available today, basically, are the single level cell and the multi level cell. Let's say single level cell, you have one bit per cell, is the most robust uh, technology, but the drawback here is that the cost. Uh, till, uh, let's say, this year, the, the, the single level cell was basically the most used technology in enterprise because of the highest reliability, the endurance, and the performance. Um, the challenge is to bring multi-level cell available for enterprise uh, workload, for, for enterprise application. It's a really a challenge because as you can see from this chart, which shows a little bit about the trend of the multi-level cell technology, you see that the endurance, when you shrink with the technology, shrinking means that you are building the silicon, the chip, um, with smaller geometry which allows you to have, uh, let's say, bigger uh, capacity with the same cost. Uh, the point is that shrinking, the technology is not getting better. So it's more and more challenging to keep the same level of reliability, the same level of endurance, and the same level of performance. That's why you see on the, just to give you uh, an example, the endurance that you are seeing here, 
So in the 60 nanometer was 10,000 cycles. It means that you can write and erase a one single cell from the uh, from the multi-level cell flash 10,000 times. Today, with the 20x, 30x nanometer, we are in a range of 2,000. Um, if you compare with single-level cell, single-level cell is able to do 100,000 cycles, even with the current shrink, which is 30, 20x nanometer. By the way, uh, in parallel, you see the other, the other chart, which shows you the ECC capability that is required to work with uh, the multilevel cell technology. ECC means error correction codes. So how much correction capability must the controller bring in order to work with the multilevel cell? And you see how the request of ECC is increasing quite, quite quickly. So these two uh, points uh, allows me to bring you to the next point, this next slide, which is uh, the core of an SSD is really the controller. To have an enterprise level SSD, you need uh, to have the right controller. A controller which is developed for uh, enterprise application. So when we uh, when we talk about uh, enterprise application, we always keep in mind that we want to achieve three key parameters: so performance, reliability, and endurance. Most of these, let's say, uh, we have several uh, mechanisms or techniques that we have developed during these years. Learning also working with the biggest OEM on this on this uh, market. Um, like, for example, the total wear leveling or the data path protection or the power, power down protection with supercapacitors. Um, more and more technology, let's say, are required uh, to, let's say, to face the challenge that is coming with multi-level set technology. Because the point is, you want still to get high quality, let's say, enterprise level SSD but you want to pay uh, less money comparing with the money that you are spending in the last few years. That's why enabling multiple cell means bringing enterprise product to, uh, let's say, a, a low-cost uh, uh, solution. So what I want to like to talk, uh, to show you today are two technologies, basically. One is the safe technology, and one is the uh, cell care. So the SAFE uh, technology has been developed for increasing the availability of the SSD, uh, of the SSD in terms of uh, increasing the MTBS, so the um, mean time between failure. So how many hours can the SSD work without any kind of not recoverable, recoverable uh, failure? And uh, the uh, cell care, which is a technology which enable the endurance, so how much can I work with the SSD, how long in terms of years can I work with the SSD. So let's start with the SAFE technology, which is basically not a new concept at all. You will see why. So the neural array of flash elements. But basically what we are doing here is to bring a RAID concept inside the SSD. So just to give you an idea, the MAX-16 that you will see shortly is a 16-channel controller. It is able to work with 16 flash in parallel. We have basically 15 channels dedicated to data transfer. One channel is dedicated to parity which means that in case, even in case you have a complete flash, complete flash die error, the, the SSD itself can still work. So it's something more <coughs> than uh, what we have discussed about ECC. So ECC is error correction inside the flash, inside the block of data. Okay, for example, 512 byte. You are capability to correct up to 10, 20, 30 uh, bits. 
what we are talking here is uh, some kind of uh, uh, error correction uh, in terms of die of flash. So even if there is a component which is failing, you can still work. Uh, from the calculation, from where this technology is already in place, so we see already on the field how it is working, actually. But by the way, you see the uh, on the right side of the slide the, the chart uh, showing uh, the requirement in, in MTBF from Enterprise. So it's basically standardized from JDA. And uh, the million hours required are around 1.6. Um, if you take uh, a standard SSD working with uh, the current flash, you see that you are not able to achieve. So it's the blue line. With our mechanism, actually, we are able to exceed this requirement. Uh, even if, I mean, you will see this kind of uh, techniques uh, more and more used also from, from other vendors. It's almost, let's say, um, something that everyone has to do now. You will see the same kind of, uh, of uh, techniques that we are implementing since three, four years. You will see it also in other, let's say, SSD vendor. Um, the only difference is that we are doing it since four or five years. So we have the expertise in here. Okay, so next slide, please. Okay, next slide. So this is the, uh, uh, I want to show you now the multi-level cell, uh, uh, let's say the cell care technology, which uh, enables the multi-level cell for enterprise workload. So basically every multi-level cell solution that you find today, even the consumer, must, uh, let's say, at least from the host point of view, outside the SSD, they have to manage the SSD in the right way. So like uh, using techniques like over provisioning, throttling, compression, the duplication. No? This is something that we have done, we have in place, we have done in the past. Uh, but what we are doing now is uh, something more. So we are going actually at low level inside the flash. So working at low level with the flash. Uh, in order, let's say, to make uh, the multi-level cell technology in the process to read and to write to the multi-level cell more reliable. This is a patent technology from SDC. We have two, uh, let's say, we have 200 engineers working on developing the controller. On this, let's say, 20 engineers are only working on uh, this kind of, uh, of technology, uh, to improve, how to improve the current multi-level cell technology. It is based on, uh, let's say, read-level adjustment, digital signal processing, adaptive flash manager, so something complex. There is an application note on the web. In case you are interested, you can get it. But just to give you uh, more about this technology, we go to low level and we adjust the way the, the, the multi-level cells work. OK, next slide. So what we achieve with this technology is exactly what I'm, uh, I'm showing you in this slide. So basically, today you can find in market two different kind of uh, multi-level cell flash technology. So the consumer, which is, let's say, the cheap technology that you buy at $1, for example, per gigabyte. Uh, the one that you see in media market or whatever consumer uh, retail. Um, it's a great technology for the laptop, but if you start working in the server in enterprise, uh, I mean, it's not enough. You see, if you start, uh, for example, writing on it, uh, you can reach the end of the life of the, of the SSD in less than uh, yeah, in three, four months, basically. That's why the flash vendors and SSD vendors have, uh, have developed, uh, let's say, the concept of enterprise multi-level cell. What they are doing basically is that they are, they are working, uh, um, writing slowly. So there is some kind of mechanism behind. They work slowly. They, they screen a bit better the, the flash die itself. But anyway, so they are able to extend 
the endurance of the consumer multilevel cell to a range which is in, the, let's mm. say, in a range of two, three years. No? What we are doing instead is to, let's say, uh, work with standard multilevel cell and uh, uh, thanks to our algorithm, the cell cell, um, stack cell care, we are able to extend the life cycle, the right cycles of the multilevel cell up to 60,000 right cycles, which means if you write 10 times per day, you can uh, use the, the drive for around 6-7 years. And all of this keeping the performance uh, still stable. And this is what I'm showing in the, basically in the next slide, please. You see basically uh, what's, what's going on on the, on the multilevel cell performance, on the left, the right performance, and the right, the read performance with the, the, uh, the passing of the years. So you see basically uh, it's much more evident uh, in the in the right side. You see the how drop uh, the, the the performance in terms of uh, uh, after one year, after two years. With our technology we keep the performance basically stable. Okay. Um, we are almost run, uh, running out of time but uh, what I would like to just to show you, um, it's just two products. So very quickly, the ZUS IOPS uh, Generation 4 Enterprise uh, SSD SAS version, which is available in single level cell and multi level cell with five years warranty. Uh, we have two versions, 2.5 inch and 2.5 inch SAS fiber channel. You can see down uh, at the end of this slide uh, the performance that we are able to achieve. With one drive, we are able to reach 70,000 IOPS in uh, random read. You see here the performance. It's a quite high-end product uh, used mostly in, uh, uh, let's say, enterprise storage, high-end application. Next slide, please, uh, uh, shows you basically the product that we are showing today. It's a SATA, still enterprise drive, single-level cell, comes with five years warranty. Multi-level cell comes with three years warranty with ten, 10 times the write capability per day. You can write basically this drive for three years without any limitation. Let's say um, you can write 10 times per day the drive. It's basically available from uh, the multi-level cell, for example, which are, we are using today is uh, available from 100 gigabyte up to 400 gigabyte. And you see the performance are not so so high as for the um, for the Zeus IOPS, but let's say this is a mid-range enterprise class SSD. So still uh, uh, is bringing uh, uh, the super capacitor in case of power down protection. Um, I mean, there's still the, the the energy to bring all the the acti pending activity uh, at the end. And uh, I mean, there is still uh, the, the full data path protection and, and so on. Okay, that's uh, that's it for me. As uh, uh, Janusz said, uh, we will be at the end of the presentation here to answer your question or any way you need, you can contact us by email. Okay, thank you very much. So now we are moving to our uh, live demo. So as I mentioned already, uh, our setup today is very simple. So, okay. Janusz? Yes? I think you had a question. Has that been addressed from M. Smith? There's a question Let me here see. in the chat. Let me see. Uh, yeah, you are right. Uh, please let me read this. Uh, has this technology been tested for running servers via Sun on VMware SXI E or uh, okay or SXI sorry or is it uh, is this more for non uh, virtualized application with direct access so here the question is I think to, for for Paul okay uh, thank you yes um, yeah 
I, I would answer it as follows. The, from a controller standpoint, it's operating system agnostic. So we don't know what OS is running or, or how many OSs or whether it's guest OSs or a host or what. So um, what's, what we're doing is just monitoring the blocks and putting what we think is the most effective uh, information into the SSD. Um, so it's a difficult thing to quantify because we can't say, yes, you will absolutely have X percent improvement if you use 10 guest OSs in a VMware environment. You know, it's, it's just there's no way to, for us to put a number on that. But absolutely, you should see improvements. Obviously, the advantages of this technology is if there are a lot of random accesses and if it's a read technology, then where data is not being changed a lot, or at least there's a certain amount of hot data. So yes, this is one of our main targets for the technology. There is a next question. This is about the presentation, uh, whether we, you, we can send it by email. Yes, uh, the presentation uh, once is recorded, so the webinar is recorded, and uh, another one for these people who wants to see this, just send us email to the email you got invitation and then we will um, forward whether to Paul to uh, to Gaetano or to me uh, uh, when okay. depends to whom the question is. Okay, next question. Where can you find on your website part numbers for the SSDs? Okay, so uh, uh, here you have the email from uh, Gaetano. Uh, you can send him an email and ask the question, okay? Yeah, just, uh, I mean, we don't, there is not a part list uh, on the website, but uh, we can uh, just send me an email with uh, your your request, what you need, and I can, uh, I can give you all the information. Maybe you should, maybe you should talk to your uh, webmaster and or marketing and see that there is more transparent for the user what uh, do you uh, uh, at the time have uh, available on the, on the, uh, uh, as a production. Okay, so coming back, uh, and please don't hesitate to ask uh, more questions. So coming back to our demo, because we want to uh, feel that it really works, and we want to be, uh, we want to really see the results, right? So for this one, and we want to see express results. Cache is a cache, means it takes time for algorithm to collect the, uh, the caching data and then provide um, directly to the user. So uh, this will require a special demo, special settings, and we want to teach you how to uh, demonstrate this to your customer because everybody wants to see results quickly. I can tell you that for the bigger amounts of data, you may wait a few hours until uh, the performance will go to the 100% of the, uh, of the uh, expected uh, caching uh, performance, right? So we will uh, we have prepared a special demo which can show the results within one minute, okay? And um, to get it done, we have just uh, one DSS with a one single RAID array to make it simple. Uh, I was creating uh, just RAID zero because if we create RAID five, then we need to wait for array to be initialized and so on. Uh, and uh, with RAID zero, we have the best possible performance when we switch off the cache, so we will see the number what is um, not possible to reach with RAID 5, okay? And on the uh, workstation side, we will just use IOMeter, then the, the best uh, easy uh, environment is, of course, Windows. We could, of course, test it under ESX or under Xen server or maybe some other operating system, but as the most popular is Windows 2008, then, of course, we do it as well. Okay, so now I, I will switch to my console, to the remote console, and let us close this. Okay, so uh, we have, of course, a DSS um, uh, V6 uh, running here, so in the volume manager volume groups, uh, as you see, we have already uh, over 6,000 um, gigabyte 
uh, because we have here as a hardware RAID connected, there is an adapted storage manager, uh, sorry, adapted controller um, uh, exists on the system. And in order to manage the controller, we need to start adapted storage manager application, which remotely can set up uh, the controller, can manage the controller, and uh, can maintenance, can run the maintenance. Okay? So, you can see that we have the we have se uh, eight um, uh, eight tray chassis. So in the eight tray chassis, we have um, seven SATA drives. That one terabyte drive, and you know that one terabyte drive, you will see something like nine three one uh, gigabyte because um, my drive manufacturer is counting in thousands and. Uh, uh, five systems are counting in 1024. There is a nice blog article uh, on our website explaining the difference. Okay, so here we have a 200 gig drive SSD from STEC. That's a Mach 16 drive. As a Mach 16 drive is a still uh, in, uh, enterprise drive, as Gaetano mentioned, and this is. Uh, um, I, I will not say low-cost drive because uh, SSD enterprise technology is more expensive than the regular uh, mass um, user product, but it is um, significantly cheaper than the uh, high-price enterprise product, but this is still enterprise product. So it is ready uh, for heavy-duty cycle. Okay? So we have this uh, and the Cache drive uh, will work on the heavy duty cycle because imagine the data which uh, user request will need to be moved from RAID array to the cache and then uh, when once it's in cache will be provided to the user. But from time to time the data change or people uh, request different files and these files need to be moved to the cache. So the cache will be um, uh, will be running under reading and writing because writing there will be data which is moved back from RAID array to the cache. So you cannot use just the uh, end user as you know the, the, the very cheap um, drive because this drive will be will die uh, soon when running under heavy duty cycle. Okay so as you see here we have created a RAID 0 um, uh, as I mentioned, it, this is because uh, we want to see fast demo and we want to see uh, how many IOs um, seven SATA drive uh, can uh, give us as a maximum. Okay? Good. So, coming back to our DSS, once I uh, came here, so the, uh, once uh, array array was created, I just selected uh, this unit, the first unit, and apply. So unit got formatted with the volume group. Okay, then we click on the volume group, and uh, we need to now create an iSCSI target, or we can create NAS volumes. For us, maybe faster, simpler is to work with iSCSI targets. So as you see, we have created the first iSCSI target is very, very small size. It's only two gigabyte uh, size. When when we were creating, let's say, hundred or bigger RAID array, uh, sorry, logical volume, then uh, in order to show the uh, cache working, we need to wait uh, sometimes even longer than one hour. So because the uh, the cache need to learn the part, the data pattern and need to move everything. Uh, to the uh, cache drive and then provide uh, on the very high performance to the user. So, because of the webinar time, we are limited with time and we are uh, very impatient to see the results. So, we have created two giga uh, volume. How to create the, the logical volume? This is very easy. Just go new iSCSI volume. Uh, just create the volume and later assign the target, or you can also uh, create the target automatically. Of course, we are preferring a block I.O. A block I.O. is a target uh, with the 
pure um, block device and the file I.O. is a target which is stored in, in the file. So this will be single XFS file. Here we have much more caching. Here there is uh, actually no caching coming from the file system, right? And then you just give the size and you can create the new iSCSI target, okay? In our case, uh, we need a, a volume with 2 giga. Uh, the next one I created is 100 giga just to show how to do it. Once the volume is created, the, it is also iSCSI cre target created automatically and already uh, the plus button is uh, clicked as you see here in the configuration iSCSI target manager on the targets. We have now two target aliases. The alias is just a, a link to the, just to manage the targets and that's the target name here. On the top, we see this. That's the target name. And also, we see the target name when we scroll down to the function rename. Yeah? That's our target name. And this target is pointing to the logical volume 2 giga. And the second target is pointing to the logical volume 100 giga. This which I just created. Okay? But we are going to test the first one. Okay, once... Uh, the target is created, that's, um, that's it. Uh, we have already exported a target to the network. So we can go to the status and uh, connections. Okay, then under connections, you can see all the possible connections. Here there is a one iSCSI uh, which is already connected and under maintenance, connections we have we will see also this but we have also option to reset once we want so the first target target zero here it is connected the second one is not connected yet okay now uh, we are in windows so in order to access iSCSI target we need iSCSI initiator right so iSCSI initiator I have uh, put my IP address of my uh, DSS and uh, I have more than one, uh, but I'm using here the, the one of available IP addresses. So I put the IP address of my uh, target, so DSS, and once entered, I have here, uh, after clicking on connect, I have a connected uh, one. So when we uh, refresh, we see uh, j uh, just after refreshing that we see that on the same um, DSS target uh, server, we have created new target, right? So this new target, I will show you again, the new target which is just created. Okay, I click on this. You see it's a target one, right? Okay, here in the rename function, that's, that's the one, okay? And this is exported to the network, and this I must see in my iSCSI initiator. So, once it is recovered, I just click on connect, and after connecting, I will see already under data uh, disk manager, I will see already new disk coming, okay? So that's my 2 giga disk, uh, the first uh, volume, and that's my 100 giga disk, the second volume, right? If I want to disconnect it, I can just go here and disconnect, okay? Then you see in data uh, disk manager, the drive disappear, okay? Because I'm deciding here on iSCSI uh, initiator what I want to connect, what I want to disconnect, okay? For us, the one with 2 giga is enough, and uh, this is even better. So let us uh, see whether we have the uh, cache uh, enabled. So here there is cache enabled, read cache, of course. There is one more thing here, new thing uh, from Adaptec, there is a write cache. We are not going to show, uh, to demo write cache today, because for the write cache, we will need to uh, different setup. We will need to have 
two RAID arrays, one RAID array without cache and second RAID array with cache. And I will need to start the test a few hours before the session starts and then I can show you the difference, okay? But for our quick demo today, uh, and the one more disadvantage of the write cache is that the SSD is a single point of failure as long as we don't have the um, option for mirroring SSD in the cache. So, but today it is the case that this is a single point of failure. So, if you want to use write cache today, uh, please consider mirroring. So, please consider DSS with failover setup the, or DSS with the uh, volume replication that you have the redundancy over uh, two servers. And if you have problem with the first one, then after failover, second is working and you have no problem at all. So here with write cache, you need to be aware that as long as you don't have the option to mirror uh, the uh, SSD drives on the caching, then you will need to mirror on the server level. So use, let's say, iSCSI failover. Okay. So I see the question. Let me check the question. How can we determine a proper capacity requirements for the size of a SSD uh, so um, as not as undersize, underutilize the purchase equipment? So, from my experience, I can tell you that, let's say, you have 10 terabyte uh, 10 terabyte big uh, RAID array and you want to have good performance uh, for your ca uh, c um, for your customer. So now you can you need to predict how much of these 10 terabyte data are frequent used data. In many cases that will be maybe 200 gig, 400 gig, 600 gig, 800 gig, this kind of stuff. Uh, in, in, in most of cases uh, the RAID array has a lot of data which are used very seldom or data which are just archiving or just images or this kind of stuff. So you will need to uh, predict with the, what kind of application customer is running and then you need to know uh, which SSD cache you need. Also, you can create two RAID arrays. One RAID array uh, just for, for slow applications uh, for applications which, which don't need performance and another RAID array with SSD cache where you need uh, performance, right? And especially here, uh, the reading performance is uh, critical for plenty of applications. Also for the ISP providers, so internet service providers, uh, like very much cache because you don't need to invest a lot of money and you will see that the performance can um, be 10 times better. And next question. Can, uh, can I say something to to that? Yes, Janusz? please. So um, it's yeah, it's a very difficult thing to um, to you know get get a, get your finger on. But what we can do is look at the logs after the system has been running for a while, and then we can see is the cache being fully used? Does it make sense to buy another one, another SSD, or is this SSD enough? So. It, it, that makes it difficult, of course, if you're selling a system and it's going out the door and, and that's it. But if somebody can send us that information after the application has been running, we can make a recommendation, oh, he could really use another SSD. So if that's mm -hmm. of any help. Yeah, yeah. So analyzing logs and seeing uh, the, uh, how the utilization of SSD is, then, then you will know how to do, uh, what you need to do. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, you can uh, help customer and then after already shipping the system, you can expand the ca capacity so uh, you have more business and uh, after selling business, right? So this is not bad uh, from the business point of view and the customer will see improvement after you sell him another drive. Okay, next question. Uh, can you use a Zeus RAM <laughs> for write and Zeus IOPS for read cache in the Q ser series controller? 
No, you right now you cannot um, deter. You cannot separate that and say I want to use this physical drive for read and that physical drive for write. That's a good. Yeah. Um, that that's a good idea though. So maybe we can we can look at that. Yeah, today it is just the same drive. Okay. Next yeah. question. But Off topic question. Uh, are you working on VAAI support for vSphere 5? What is VAAI? Okay, Ralph, uh, please uh, just se send us explanation what is VAAI and then we will try to answer the question. Okay, Paul, by meantime, you can also uh, try to Google or uh, okay. find out. I mean, we, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let us continue, or maybe we'll get uh, also feedback from Ralph what VAAI is, uh, okay? And then if we'll not find the uh, answer right now, then we can answer after webinar, okay? Uh, so, uh, showing this to you, we have this option with write cache, but we are going to uh, demonstrate the read cache only, and uh, for the read cache, uh, we have selected small volume in order to see the results much, much, much faster. So now, uh, read cache is enabled, and uh, uh, I have option to disable the cache. So let us start Iometa. As you know, Iometa, so now I have the 2 giga volume, which is a not formatted volume. Okay? So I have option to format the volume, and I have option to, uh, uh, let's say, create the uh, and test file. Okay? If you want to create a test file, then uh, there is a very practical thing which I want to show it to you. Okay, so when we go to when we go to our blog, the, you will, you may find the blog article. Okay, very easy. Just say blog uh, dot openy dot com. Okay, and in, in the blog, you can just uh, write iometer. Okay, and what we, what we find? Okay, few practical tips about iometer. Okay, then in the practical tips about iometer, we explain how to run and w uh, what happened when you have formatted drive, you need a special test file. And here we have a present for you, uh, test file creator exe you can download and then with this file, uh, with this program you can easily create such a, uh, a test files, right? In our case, uh, I did not format the drive. So when the drive is formatted is the, is yellow, but when, when the test drive is there, then is no red uh, cross here, right? When I have unformatted drive, then the drive is uh, kind of blue. I uh, I don't know exactly the the color, but uh, for sure not yellow. And it is ready to test at once, right? So uh, in this case, we will need to uh, select. You know, I have few workers, eight workers. You can have less or more workers, but I want to simulate a really good uh, traffic with random performance. So look, I select every worker, and on every worker I need to select the drive that I need the, the red one selection, right? There is no other way. You need to click every worker and then select the drive. Okay, now I have for all workers drive selected. Now I select the computer, and now I can say, let's say, 16 outstanding I.O. and look, I select every worker and everywhere is 16 because I was having selected the computer. So in this case, it works when I sell, I put once the value and all workers receive the same value. Same I will do on, on, on creating the, the test pattern. 
The test pattern, you have SAM here. You have, of course, the default test pattern is testing with 2K block with 100% random, and you see it's testing with uh, 30, so some writes and a bit more um, uh, reads. So it is mostly reading and then uh, a little writing, right? But we can also test this pattern and we will see a very nice improvement. But we are interested in the reading uh, first. So uh, let me create, let's say, read pattern. And I can stay with 2K and I can also switch to 4K, 8K later on. 100% uh, random is this what we are looking for. And let's us test 100% read first, okay? So that's the pattern, okay? And now because I have selected the computer and when I click on add, this read pattern will, I will add to all uh, workers. Proof, okay, I click here, you see everywhere I have the same pattern, okay? Great, that works. Now we know that every worker has the same pattern, and then we go to results. In the results, we will uh, maybe test every second or every every second, uh, second. Okay, start. We can save the results or we can just cancel because we don't need the results, so we can cancel. And then uh, the test starts, okay? So we had, we see some uh, I.O. per second, we see some megabytes and uh, some other details, okay? So let us stop the test and let us go to Adaptex Storage Manager and let us um, disable the read cache. So I'm disabling the, the read cache. Uh, let us prove when everything works well. So I go max cache again. So this is probably need to be refreshed. Okay. Now it's done. So you need to click on refresh. Okay. So a max configure, I have option to enable. So the cache supposed to be switched off. Okay. So let us start the test. I cancel because I don't need the results. Okay, so is it I see something wrong. Ah, last update. I need to make sure that I have the um, start test since last update. That's one thing. One more thing. Let me see. Is it uh, configure max cache. Okay. Okay. Great. So we can show, let's say maybe I will put, okay, 10, maybe I put 15,000. Okay, so my scale show up to 15,000, okay? So uh, now uh, what we are uh, experiencing here, so it's something like 1,200, okay, 1,200. Uh, what's going on here? I have the, uh, I have option to enable max cache, right? So my cache is off. And I have the array zero from seven drives. And the results which I'm seeing here is quite what I'm expecting, right? Uh, why I, I see this kind of result? Uh, what is um, I.O. per second? You know, when the second has a thousand millisecond, right? So, uh, when I see, for example, 200 I.O. means uh, 200 times per second, I am able to uh, uh, move the data, right? So, in this case, 
uh, I need average seek time, so average option to, to move the data, it needs to be something like uh, 5 milliseconds, right? Okay, so when I scale the drives, when I will have the 10 such drives, every drive has a 5 millisecond, when I scale this, so with 10 drives, I, I should have maybe 2,000 I.O. per second, right? So when my drive is a bit slower because it's SATA drive, so don't have 5 milliseconds, but has, let's say, 10 milliseconds. So when I have 10 millisecond drive, uh, then uh, I'm expecting 100 I.O. because uh, second has a 1,000 millisecond, right? So 1,000 uh, divided by, uh, by 10 is 100 I.O. And this is a mechanism uh, which is uh, typical for the mechanical drive because I need to move the heat in order to find the sector and to find the data or find the sector where I want to write the data or read the data, right? So it is not possible to make uh, this faster. The, the only way to make it faster is make smaller drive. Let's say SAS drives are today not 3.5 inch, but maybe 2.5 inch. So the geometry is smaller and the motor is much more powerful. This is why on the mo uh, fastest enterprise drive, you can see three milliseconds as an average access time, right? In this case, 1,000 divided by 3 is something 333, right? So over 300 I.O. per second you can get without any caching, right, from such a drive. So with, uh, with SAS drives we can have, let's say, three times better, maybe five times better than slow SATA, right? Uh, but, you know, when you need to buy all SAS drives, uh, this can be expensive because uh, you need capacity, and the SAS drives are much lower capacity, much faster. So, uh, uh, where to go? Uh, where to go is uh, buy one uh, SSD drive, buy a um, uh, cache option, and what we, can, uh, what we can get. Let us switch on the cache. Okay. So, during the testing, I'm switching on the cache. Now, the cache algorithm starts to learn the, our data pattern. Okay, let us see what happened. And you see, for this, uh, I was getting even a bit uh, slower uh, performance on performance, and now I'm already having same performance as uh, without, and now the performance is growing. Okay, so it takes a very small time when I have only two giga uh, small volume. If I will have a bigger volume, it will take some minutes in a very big volumes, even more than one hour until you will get the full performance. But you see, the ratio is something oscillating about uh, 10 times. Okay? Here I was having 1,200, and here I have, I was, uh, I'm oscillating about uh, 12,000, right? So, very easy way uh, to get uh, random performance. Of course, if we test here sequential performance, it doesn't really matter. You know, sequential performance is always good, and there is no way, reason to improve it, because uh, it uh, scales almost linear. You put more drives you have much better sequential performance even with the SATA drives, right? Uh, but uh, the problem uh, which industry has is a random performance, of course. And that's the solution which we can have. No big investment and a very good uh, results. But please uh, don't forget that you need kind of enterprise drive for the SSD caching because here this drive will work under heavy duty cycle. Okay, let us uh, read the questions. Okay, by sorry, meantime Janusz, we have... For v, sorry, for the VI, VAAI, um, I've looked at the website and um, we do not have that support today. I can Aha. pass that on, I can pass that on to the US, uh, but um, we This do is not a V-Storage API for array integration, right? 
Yeah, it's it's. I've more got uh, I've got um, um, feedback from Ralph that VA uh, AI stands for V Storage API for array integration. Yes, it's what I'm reading on the web is it's it's to offload the host uh, in some fashion. But I would know if we had the support today, I would know it. So I, I will say we don't have it, but I will uh, pass it on to the U.S. and uh, you know. Maybe uh, this is something we can do later. Mm -hmm. Here I've got comment from Gaetano. Uh, please pay attention to generate a random test pattern since some SSD are using a compression are using compression to increase performance. Yeah, let me let me comment. Just uh, I mean yeah. test environment that you see here uh, has a certain complexity. So when you refer uh, uh, about the performance of an SSD on the paper, especially when you go on the internet, uh, every kind of consumer SSD, you will see uh, numbers which are far away from the reality. So uh, just pay attention when you make tests. Uh, you see how complex it is also to configure your meter. Uh, consider also that uh, the test pattern that you are using to emulate the behavior of no, this system um, has to be generated in a way that you are not having a lot like, uh, let's say, all zero, all one, because most of the commercial uh, SSD that you find in the market uh, has uh, have a compression algorithm no, to increase the performance, especially for the sequential throughput and so on. You find, uh, I attached a link, you can find uh, also on our website some kind of information about how to test uh, correctly an SSD. And consider also, last comment, that uh, uh, when you put an SSD inside uh, a much big environment like this with some more uh, hard disk, with some caching and so on, the maximum performance that we declare on the data sheet uh, for sure can be impacted because the SSD itself is cooperating with other elements inside the, uh, the system. By the way, I, I mean this performance here, considering that you have a, a multi-level cell, this is a multi-level cell drive, uh, which let's say the 100 gigabyte cost around uh, $500, no? more or less. No? It's an enterprise drive, uh, uh, five years warranty, power down protection, you can work 24 hours. So we are showing you something that really can uh, work under uh, enterprise environment. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. And then, you know, <clears throat> here I, I was showing you that, you know, when I have a pure RAID array, uh, which is consists of, of SATA, and I use exactly the same, you know, bad pattern, which is not a, um, able to show the good details, but in many cases, uh, you know, user applications also behave with a bad pattern, and even everything is, uh, you know, great um, hardware, then the, uh, in the end of the day, customer is unhappy with the performance, especially when you have 100, 200, few hundred, or even thousands of users which are accessing the system. I remember a lot of stories uh, from internet provider which were showing me on the uh, on the platform on the monitoring tools uh, that was in MRTG at that time I remember that he was sh uh, showing uh, over to, uh, over 1,200 users simultaneously loading files from the server and of course the bottleneck was raid array and. At that uh, time, when he will be able to expand the, this RAID array with, the, uh, with such a uh, cache, he will solve the, the problem, right? Because uh, he wanted, he was just chasing for something like dual or three times better performance, yeah? He asked stat statistically he will have, uh, you know, uh, ten times better performance, right? Okay, so when, when during this um, uh, test you see that everything uh, works, uh, you know, something about 10 times better, but of course it is, uh, the algorithm works all, all the time, so sometimes it's a bit slower, sometimes it's a, a bit faster, but statistically uh, your performance 
is is about ten times better. Okay. Next question. Uh, this question is mainly to OpenE because they connect to a six uh, server. Okay. Yes. So as uh, you know, I know that this is a nice feature to uh, to add. We we have started to work on API. And we have already, um, you know, some set of command line interface uh, commands. Uh, we will uh, expand this. We'll have more, and also we will add API. And then, then next step will be integrating with uh, vSphere. So this is in our roadmap. But uh, we have some uh, other um, features we need to develop faster. So our API, so Open EDSS API. We, then we will be able to use our product uh, uh, with scripting, right? Uh, good. So now, just to one more proof. Uh, just on the uh, end, I will just switch off the the cache. So now I will disable the cache, and then when we uh, come back here, you need to make sure that your settings, which we show, is a last update. Then it is showing exactly. Uh, uh, you know, at that point, not calculating from the beginning of the test, but just a temporary value. So you see, my uh, seven drives, RAID array, seven times one terabyte drive, SATA drives, in RAID zero, okay, I can see without any special tricks, caching, and so on, I'm able physically to have 1,200 uh, IO per second.